Hello and welcome to the Reapers. So today we're in our F5E Tiger 2 and we're looking at using ADF, Automatic Direction Finding. So the F5 has two types of navigation, TACAN and auto ADF. We've already covered TACAN in a separate video, so today we're just looking at ADF. Now it works by, uh, it's basically a passive system. It listens for radio signals from things called NDBs, non-directional beacons. Non-directional beacons are are kind of like radio transmitters that are in certain places in the terrain and they emit in all directions at a certain frequency and they emit uh, basically coded information in a radio signal so let's have a look at some of these uh, ndbs we're on the mission editor uh, the reason is it's just easier to to show them in the mission editor as a tutorial so we've got one at Sharjah international you can see it's that thing there and it's at a frequency of 112.30 megahertz and um, just out of interest we've got another one here a slightly different shape as a different type of ndb uh, at 265.00 kilohertz now you'll notice after the uh, frequency it's got a code in this case do and in this case for Shah international sjh and we'll go over that um, a little bit later in the tutorial first of all um this does not work in the caucuses you'll notice we're in persian gulf here the reason is that um the f5 works uh, with a uhf radio uf rate UFH radio means that it can only work in the megahertz range. It can't work in the kilohertz range. So this one here, the 265 kilohertz, we cannot find that on our F5 radio. We can only, we can find this one, which is in the megahertz range. Okay, uh, and if you go and look at all of the uh, various, probably hundreds of NDBs in the Caucasus map, you'll find that they're all in the kilohertz range because it's a true model of the Caucasus, the Georgia, and whatnot, and that's what they have over there. So we select the Persian Gulf. Um, if you've got Nevada, that will probably work. I haven't checked it, but it will probably work uh, in the megahertz range. So we've chosen this one purely at random. Um, and so first thing we do is write down this information 112.30, 112.30 and SJH code name. Right, uh, the next thing we want to do is explain this, like I said earlier, passive system only it receives information on over the ADF, um, but it cannot send information, it cannot handshake with that NDB, so we can't get range, we can only get azimuth, so we'll never be able to tell how close we are to this, not really, just the direction, um, and uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the direction, we're going to tune into the station, clarify it's the correct station, fly towards it on the correct azimuth, the only way we'll know once we've got to this station is when we're above it, at which point the direction needle that is directing us to this station starts to swing around, because we're above it now, We're not. there's no real direction to it and then eventually we'll go past it and the needle will swing all the way around until it is behind us so that's how we're going to use it uh, prudent to point out at this point that these can be used for general navigation we're just using this for general navigation to get to the airport it can be also used for approaches so uh, this i can't see any examples here but you may have an inner and an outer beacon on a runway um so this is a runway here uh, you might have an uh, an inner um ndb here and one mile out and an outer here two miles out and um, if you had that um that this airport doesn't uh, then you would that would allow you to do a full approach and landing using these ndbs um you would navigate to the first one then you would navigate to the second one and then you would basically land um bearing in mind information you would gain about as you cross over those two ndbs uh, now we're not interested in landing today we're only interested in, in the just the simple general navigation so let's go to the bird uh facts so save and off we go okay so we're in the bird now we're flying in some random direction about 20 miles away from the airport uh, so we're interested in the hs high here that's going to give us a direction to the um the adf source the ndb and we've got our radio here uh, which we're going to use to tune into the ndb so let's start work first of all we're going to we're going to tune it manually i think we probably could have done this with presets but in this case we're going to do it manually so we're going to use the radio tuner to tune to one t means one 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 uh 2.3 but we're going to change it to and already you can see it's working but you can you can hear some um, beeps uh let me just quickly go show before we go any further we can have this in main in fact we can actually switch this to adf now we're going to use it for the purpose of adf so switch it to AD adf now volume you can turn up if you want if you want to check that the beeping tone's working you can press the tone button there and this wants to be set to manual so we can type in the manual code uh that's that so next foot so we've tuned into the station and the next thing we want to do is clarify we're on the right station if you remember on 
on the map there was a code s j h three letters um and um that is what we use for our clarification now i'm going to jump into uh google now i apologize you won't be able to see this i'm going to go in google for my sins i'm going to type morse code converter click on the first link and i'm going to type in the thing i want to convert which is s j h and translate and it's translated s j h into morse code that is dot 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 space dot 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 space dot dash 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 so i'm just writing that down now what we're going to do is back to the cockpit we're going to listen to the morse code that's been presented um by the ndb and check that we've got the correct morse code so stand by sounds like it's just finished a cycle so wait uh, 10 seconds and it will start a new cycle Finish the cycle. It did dot 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 space dot 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 space dot dash dash dash. That is correct. That's what we were looking for from our translation from Sierra Hotel Juliet. So let's confirm we're on the right station. All we've got to do is navigate to the station now. So we've got our master mode uh, navigation uh, mode knob down here from Takan to DF direction finding. Uh, what that is going to do excuse me is um it's basically given us a marker point here so this point here is now pointing to where it believes that adf sorry that ndb is which is three zero zero so all we're going to do now is turn left and move that up to our 12 o'clock position we're going to leave the um tone beeping just so we can confirm that we haven't switched stations by accident now um this is partially modeled in uh, dcs it's possible in reality frequencies can get messed up by real life things like air water wind stuff like that and so it's possible you can actually although you're staying on 112.3 here you can actually slip off to a neighboring channel and so the reason we're keeping the morse code is to go is to make sure we haven't slipped off to a major uh, a different channel by accident basically sometimes annoyingly they have um, ndb channels very close to each other next thing to point out this is a line of sight system radio waves cannot travel through mountains so you have to have line of sight the next thing is, I'm not sure of the range limit. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't really have a range limit in NDB. Uh, however, if you test it, maybe you would get 60 or 70, maybe even 100 miles out of it. I'm not really sure. That's something that we need testing. Well, as it's for general navigation, I'd probably say it's 100 miles plus. Uh, you could pick a signal up. Um, right, in a lot of planes, you have uh, signals. Sorry, I'm not, I can't talk and fly, so I'm struggling here. So I'm just getting my navigation, getting that to... Uh, uh, cursor on the 12 o'clock position so that we're heading in there um it can be a little bit finicky you'll just have to get used to it Send tends to slew around a bit uh what was i trying to say there yes yeah, so i was trying to say that um in a lot of other planes you get a signal strength meter that detects how s so we've tuned into a station but we don't know how strong that signal is uh, so in some planes you get a signal um uh, uh, like meter that shows you how strong your signal is and shows how how uh, well you are tuned to that station uh, so this is a modern um this is a modern system you don't have that you don't really need it you're either on the station or you're off it um, it probably has fancy electronic stuff going in the background to handle the, all that for you right anyway let's keep going now we can see the uh, runway out of our windows but we're not going to cheat we're just going to keep using this system here so we've got that ADF pointer directly on the 12 o'clock position. Note that we don't have any um, uh, any range because of the reasons we spoke about earlier. You could use this in, in tandem with a course line, as I explained, showed in the Takan um, tutorial. However, just for simplicity, we're not going to do it with the ADF here. Uh, and that's how you use it. I spoke earlier that you can use it for approach and landing. You'd use it in conjunction with course line, which you'd set with this knob um, with the runway, but uh, we're not going to worry about that now. Right, burners on. Let's speed this tutorial up still on the 12 o'clock position as you can see slewed slightly to the right you see it's moving ever so slightly to the right so we're going to chase it i'm going to slip off now when that marker starts moving violently which is just starting doing now then you can see it started to swing round um I was roll the plane left and right then it upset the needle a little bit um uh now because we're literally about to go over the top of the signal in fact we are going over the top of it now you can see that um the needle is going to roll right the way around and that's how we know we're on top of it so watch the needle go round 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 and that's it
basically. Uh, the quicker that needle spins round, um, the closer you are to the actual point of the beacon. We were about half a mile off there, a quarter of a mile maybe, so it moved round fairly slowly. If we Just because of my bad driving. If we went directly over the top of it, um, then this needle will go whoop, swing that fast, and that's how you know how close you are t to that beacon. Um, regards, uh, just, just for your general knowledge, if you're doing an approach and you're using the outer and inner beacons, this airport doesn't have them as you can see, if it did, when you go over those beacons, rather than having the needle switch round, which would still happen, uh, you would actually get a tone in the aircraft saying you're over those beacons. That only happens with these inner and outer beacons um, that you can get with runways. Right, uh, that's it really. Um, you could go and tune in another one and uh, another beacon now and head to that and uh, Bob's your uncle. Uh, I hope that helps. Go jump in your F5 and go and find some NDB beacons. Have fun and I'll see you later.